Hello and welcome back to The Hidden Wars. It's been some time since I last uploaded a video, but we're back now and ready to cover more forgotten but important conflicts of the 21st century. Today's video, we're going back to the Middle East and more specifically, we're going to look at the case of Iraq and how they truly gained their independence. What we now call modern-day Iraq came to exist after the fall of the Ottoman Empire following their defeat in World War I. The victorious powers, Britain and France, designed a plan to divide the Middle East and share it between themselves. Before World War I even officially ended, they created a plan called the Sykes-Picot Agreement in which they, they designed the borders of influence which they were controlled. Little did they know at the time that these new borders that they decided on themselves will shape the future for decades to come in the region. As soon as World War I finished, a mandate system was established by which Britain was given full administrative power over Iraq. What made Iraq even more important was the oil discoveries in the 1920s. Petroleum was becoming a vital resource for the 20th century and countries which possessed it played an important role in the global economy. To make sure that the Iraqis would listen whatever the British say, the British installed Faisal I as the king of Iraq. And even though the majority of the population were Shia Arabs in Iraq, the minority of Sunni Muslims were given all the power to rule the country. When they drew up the plan, the British and the French did not take into account the diversity and the demographics of the region. As you can see of this map, there is plenty of different ethnic groups and religious minorities that coexist together and if you group them in one country, it will inevitably create division inside the country. And that is what happened in Iraq. They grouped up Sunni, Shia, Kurds and a few other minority groups in one country that will soon prove to be very destabilizing and creating conflicts in the future in that region. Tensions between the Iraqis and the British was growing under Faisal's rule and by 1932, by the request of the king, the British granted independence to Iraq. Even though they granted independence in 1932, the British still pretty much had a lot of influence in Iraq as they maintained their military bases, continue exploiting the oil, and they were very highly influential over the king's decisions. Even though officially Iraq was an independent country, this did little to help to the ordinary Iraqis who wanted true independence and removal of the king. Then came the opportunity. It was 1941 and World War II was ongoing. Britain was preoccupied in fighting in Europe, so the Iraqis had their chance. So Iraq pretty much became unstable as soon as it was granted official independence. As early as 1936, four years after they declared independence, there was a coup attempt to replace the prime minister at the time. And since then, military coups would become a usual method to take power in the country. The real attempt, however, to abolish the monarchy came in 1941, in the midst of World War II. At the time, Iraq's head of state was King Faisal II, but because of his young age, a regency was appointed, headed by Abdullah of Hejaz. Also, Iraq's alliance with Britain in the war was not approved by many of its military officers in the army, which were very nationalistic. The anger and frustration with the war of the general population in Iraq became even more powerful as soon as a powerful mufti called Amin al-Husseini arrived from Palestine where he just unsuccessfully organized an uprising against the British. As the British were controlling Palestine as well at the time, Amin al-Husseini just fled Palestine and arrived in Iraq and he attempted to organize an uprising against the British in Iraq and he hoped his uprising would be successful in Iraq this time. So in April of 1941, a group of military officers, which were called the Golden Squad, launched a military coup with some assistance of Nazi Germany. The young king and the regent managed to flee the country, but upon hearing the news, Britain mobilized its forces in the Middle East and invaded Iraq to restore its control. The coup leaders were quickly defeated and the king was restored to the throne. Britain would then go to occupy Iraq until 1947, so they made sure that no coup attempt is happening during their occupation. And Britain eventually left in 1947 and left Iraq to govern itself. But as soon as they left, another uprising was knocking on the door. So 
So, after World War II, the balance of power in the world had shifted. Britain was no longer strong enough to maintain its global influence, and two new superpowers emerged, the United States and the Soviet Union. Both were competing for influence around the world, and the Middle East was one of the battlegrounds. So in 1958, barely 11 years after Britain had left Iraq to govern itself, the Hashemite dynasty of King Faisal II was overthrown and the monarchy abolished. Army officers inspired by Abdel Nasser from Egypt succeeded in a coup attempt and established the first Iraqi Republic. The leader of the coup was Abdel Karim Qasim, who became Iraq's first president. There was no longer a ruling dynasty in Iraq and Karim Qasim was from the Shia majority, so now the Shia Arabs in Iraq felt like they were gaining the control that the Sunni Arabs had denied them before. But Abdul Karim Qasim had the difficult task to govern Iraq in the midst of the Cold War. Soon after he took power, he established close ties to the Soviet Union, which ultimately made him an enemy of the United States. He was, however, giving better representation of the Shia majority in the country, which made him somewhat popular among the general population. But due to his ties with the Soviets, he was very unpopular in America. In a few years' time, he will be overthrown again in a coup, which will teach Iraqis an important lesson for the future. So that was all for today's video. We covered how Iraq became independent. It was a rough start from the beginning. Their country's borders were decided by Britain, not by themselves, and different groups of people, which not all liked each other, were grouped in one country. This ultimately sealed the fate of Iraq. The future was going to be not stable, and even though Iraq was blessed with oil discoveries and potentially was going to become a rich country, the destabilization caused by these borders and the different people fighting each other for power in the country would make it a very unstable country for the future. The Iraqis managed to gain their independence in 1958 through force and by force is gonna become the usual method on how a person takes power in Iraq. They would be interesting years for the future to come in Iraq and other coups which we will cover in a future episode. I hope you liked this video and if you did, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure also to subscribe and follow more videos of The Hidden Wars.